All right, hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, sorry for the late start, we had a little bit of some technical difficulties, but um, I'm glad for everyone who's able to join us. Now, I'm gonna give the time for everyone to um, enter. Uh, I'll just give a, a few minutes and then once some more people join us, I will start the information session. I'll just briefly introduce myself. Hi everyone, my name is Alicia Sejus and I am one of the program officers in NIFA's uh, grants department. And I am looking forward to giving you some more um, context about the Niska NIFA Artist Fellowship and particularly about craft sculpture and printmaking uh, slash drawing slash book arts. And yeah, so we'll just give a, a couple minutes to let uh, some people in. And in the meantime, I will share once I do start the information session, we do have a Q&A box enabled. So if anyone does have any questions during the information session, you're welcome to drop them in there. I recommend just um, taking the time to, um, to let the information session start in case some questions do pop up early on, but you're welcome to drop in your questions at any point. All right, and we're gonna start in just one more minute. So thank you all for your patience. All right, so we'll get to starting with the information session. Um, hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, joining us for today's um, Niska Knife Art Artist Fellowship Information Session. Uh, as everyone uh, may already know, applications opened on October 25th, and the application deadline is Wednesday, um, Wednesday, uh, January 25th, 2023, uh, and the deadline is at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And for anyone who may have any questions after this information session, you can contact us at fellowships at nyfa.org. All right, and before we get started, I just wanted to give um, uh, some information about some of our upcoming information sessions for uh, this grant. We do have other sessions coming up and they're all going to be held virtually. Um, the next one is on November 17th for nonfiction literature and poetry. And there's another one on December 1st um, for digital electronic arts. And then we have a final one on December 15th, which will be focused on written statements. And this is um, for all of the available disciplines. And this information session, as well as our other upcoming information sessions, will be recorded and um, posted on the, the fellowship's homepage, as well as on NIFA's YouTube page. All right, and for today's uh, session, we will be going over craft sculpture and printmaking um, slash drawing slash book arts. And um, this, the following agenda that we have is just what is the Niska Naipa Artist Fellowship, um, a brief rundown of the eligibility criteria, how to apply, uh, the dis discipline definitions that we use for both of these categories, what to include in your application form, uh, how are the applications reviewed, and some application tips. All right, so getting into the Niska Naipa Artist Fellowship, it is an $8,000 unrestricted cash award. It is not a project grant, meaning you are not expected to submit a project proposal or a budget. You are also, if awarded, you are not expected to provide a um, report. So this award is open to artists that um, uh, that's focused on sharing your artistic vision and voice, and you will be expected to submit completed bodies of work. It's awarded in 15 different disciplines, with five disciplines being reviewed each year. 
It's, a, it's awarded to individuals and collaborating originating artists. Applications are reviewed anonymously in the first round, meaning panels will not have access to your name during that first round of review. And it's free to apply. So I encourage everyone who is interested in applying um, to submit their application. And recipients, as well as um, anyone who has applied, will be notified in summer of 2023. And as for the eligibility criteria um, to apply, um, you have to be 25 years old or older by the application deadline. You must be a resident of New York State uh, and are one of the Indian nations located in New York State, and you must have maintained that residency for at least the last two consecutive years. So um, for this year's cycle, that would mean you would have to have been a New York State resident for 2021 and 2022, as well as continuing to be a New York resident um, at the time of app application notification. Um, you cannot be enrolled in a degree-seeking program of any kind during this application um, window. You must be the originator of the work you are submitting. Um, if you have, uh, you cannot apply if you have received a Niska Naipa Artist Fellowship um, in any discipline in the last five years. So that would be for 2018 and 2022. And I do want to clarify this is specific to the Niska Naipa Artist Fellowship. This does not apply if you had been awarded previously for uh, a NISCA grant or for the other grants that we offer here at NIFA. And while collaborating artists are eligible to apply, the total number of collaborators cannot exceed three and that includes um, the person who is submitting the application. Uh, so if you do plan to apply as a collaborative group, you um, have, must have no more than three people and you must all meet that uh, meet the eligibility criteria. Applicants can apply in a maximum of two categories per application cycle and if you'd like to do so you will have to submit two separate applications and um, you cannot submit any work samples that have been previously awarded in this Gunai for Artist Fellowship so if anyone um, listening here is a past fellow, um, just keep in mind that you should be submitting new work in your application. Any artists that have received five Niska NIFA Artist Fellowships will no longer be eligible to apply for this award. And anyone who may be a past or very recent um, finalist for this grant is eligible to apply this year. All right. So before you begin your application, I would highly recommend that you take the time to review the discipline specific guidelines. In this case, for the people who are listening now, that would be for either craft sculpture or printmaking, drawing book arts. And the links to all of these guidelines can be found in the application form, but also online uh, on our home page. And you can read it on the website. And we also have a PDF version that you can download. So how do you apply? Um, when you go to the Niska Naifa Artist Fellowship homepage, you will find a, an apply button um, and you can create a new application via that link. If you scroll down, you will find all of the discipline uh, application forms. And um, if you do not already have a submittable account, please, um, you will be prompted to create an account if you do click on the application form. So um, you'll have to do that first. And once you um, create your account, you will have access to the application form and you can select the categories that you'd want to apply in. So whether it's one category or two, you can select those categories and you are also able to save your application as a draft if you'd like to go back to it later. And you'll fill out your application. Um, we do not accept any hard copies. All copies of the application will only be accepted on the submittable platform and you'll take the time to upload um, your work samples for depending on the discipline, it will depend on the format that you would need and you'll submit your application. And once you submit your application, you will receive an email notification um, automatically sent to you from Submittable confirming that we have received your application. And just another reminder that applications are due Wednesday, January 25th, 2023 at 5 p.m. And the application form will close automatically at this time. Um, so there will be no extensions. All right. 
And now we're going to get um, into specifically craft sculpture and printmaking, drawing book arts, and we'll just go through um, the different items related to both of these disciplines. So for the discipline definitions, and these are also listed on the application um, guidelines, as well as on our website. Um, this is the definition that we use for these disciplines and also what the panel will be referring to during the review process. So first for craft sculpture, um, this category accepts works in all forms of craft, including ceramics, glass, wood, metal, fiber, textiles, and mixed media. This category accepts work in all forms of sculpture, including uh, kinetic works and installations. And for anyone who's applying in printmaking, drawing, book arts, this category includes work in visual media other than painting. Uh, it includes artist books, aquatints, collages, engravings, etchings, lithographs, monotypes, prints, serographs, woodcuts, and drawings. Uh, artists whose works uh, involves painting only, including water watercolorists, should apply in the painting category in the next cycle. And for any artist whose works uh, involves computer as the primary medium, should apply in the digital electronic arts category, which is also being offered this year. and the different items that you will need to include in your application form. Um, first, you will have to include, um, first thing that you will come across when you do open up your application is an eligibility form. This form needs to be completed before you have access to the rest of the form. Uh, so we will need to complete that first. Then you'll also need to complete um, uh, any contact details as well as dem demographics. And we do ask some information about your New York State residency. You'll also have some written material that you will need to submit for, um, for this grant. And, and this applies to both, and I should clarify this, this applies to both printmaking, drawing book arts, and craft sculpture. Um, they do um, request the same written statements. Uh, and what is required from all applicants is a 100 word artist statement, as well as a 100 word work statement. And you also have three optional statements that you can submit. And that includes a 200 word technical statement, a 400 word expert explanation, and a 400 word cultural statement. And getting into the work samples, again, this applies to both disciplines. You, have, you, are, you can submit a maximum of 10 images in JPEG format only. Uh, you are welcome to submit fewer than 10 if you feel that your work is better represented with less. Uh, we do recommend that each image file be no larger than four megabytes, uh, just um, so that we can ensure that the system will properly accept these images. All application work samples will only be submitted on, will only be reviewed on the submittable platform. Um, so we just want, um, to ensure that there aren't any files being submitted that are too large. So this is just one thing uh, to keep in mind. Another recommendation is to label your image files um, with a uh, number order at the beginning of um, each image, just so that when you do upload them, if you choose to upload them all at the same time and you have a particular order that you want the panel to review it in, this will just make it easier for it to be uploaded in the order that you want. But there is also a toggle function available, available on Submittable for you to move around your images in case you want to do it that way. And once you do upload your images, there is a metadata section in the application. The section will appear, appear on your application form after each work sample image is uploaded, and you'll be able to provide the following descriptions. That includes um, the title of your work. So your image file will not be used to represent your title. So there will be a section to add that, as well as the date of completion, um, any materials that you use to create um, this particular work that you have in your image, the dimensions of the work, as well as any additional information and um, descriptions that the descriptions that you want to give for your images can be done for each um, independent image. So you'll have the liberties to um, curate your work samples in that way. 
And another thing that we just want you to keep in mind is that your name should not be listed on your work samples um, file or metadata because uh, as we mentioned earlier, all applications will be reviewed anonymously in that first round. Right. And I just wanted to give an example of um, how it would look when you do upload your images you will find if anyone has already started a draft application, you might have already come across it. But once you do open your application and you go to the um, work sample section, you will see um, a, an area to upload your images. And um, it'll just show up as one box. And once you do, um, you can upload all of your images, uh, all 10 images uh, simultaneously, but you are also welcome to upload them one at a time or remove some if you. Um, realize that these are not the images that you want to use for your application. And once you do upload an image, um, the following prompt will appear. You'll have your uh, a little thumbnail of your image showing, um, as well as the file name. However, the file name will not be um, will not be used to represent your title. So there is a title section as well as a section to add the date, whether it's 2022 or previously. Um, the materials that you use the dimensions and any additional information. And we do recommend that this additional information remains brief as you also have your written statements to share uh, additional information about your work. Um, and the section is usually um, previewed pretty quickly by the panel. So we just recommend keeping that any additional information that you have um, pretty brief and concise. So how are the applications reviewed? Um, all of them are peer reviewed. We do uh, recruit panelists for uh, all of our um, offered disciplines uh, and, panel and all applications that are submitted will be reviewed uh, by the panel. And they are reviewed and go through multiple elimination rounds. Um, panelists will review the applications independently for the first two rounds. And again, all applications will be reviewed anonymously in that first round. And um, eventually there will be a discussion round where panelists will discuss the applications that have uh, made it through past those um, first two rounds. And there will be a final vote, which will involve selecting the fellows and finalists for uh, each of these categories. And each discipline has its own um, panel. Um, so everyone is independent to the discipline that they are reviewing. And if you'd like more detailed information about the panel review process, I do recommend looking at the guidelines as we do go a little more in depth in how that process is done. And just going to get into sharing some application tips. Um, please note that um, one thing that we highly recommend that you do before you even start is reading the discipline specific guidelines that shares all of the information that you will need um, uh, for your application, including the definition, uh, the file formats uh, that you want to keep in mind, how to um, submit your work, um, also descriptions on how to apply if you need some assistance on how to create your account. And um, it's one thing that we just recommend looking at um, to make sure that you are fully equipped to submit your application. Um, we also recommend that you carefully read the eligibility form questions. This will show up first on the application form and based on how you answer the, uh, the eligibility form questions um, is based on whether or not you will be determined um, eligible to continue to see the rest of the application. So just read them carefully to make sure that you are answering them um, appropriately. And we also, uh, want to note to um, allow enough time to upload your work samples. Uh, don't leave this to the last minute um, and upload your work samples. You can upload your work samples ahead of time and save your application as a draft. The application form will automatically close at 5 p.m. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. And um, we usually recommend uploading as uh, as early as you can, and also um, submitting at, as early as you were able to. You do not have to submit today. There's a lot of time to work on your application, but we just recommend not leaving it to the last couple of hours. You may run into 
technical issues, you may also realize that you have an error that might need some time to fix. So we just want to ensure that you are taking the time to um, submit. And if you do have questions, you also have allowed some time to reach out to us since a lot of people do um, tend to submit during the last couple of hours. And we just wanna make sure that you are able to submit successfully. All right. And before submitting your application, once you have everything in your application form and you feel that you are ready to go, um, you just wanna double check to if all of your work samples are in the order you want them to be reviewed. Again, you can upload up to 10 images. You may have a certain order that is particularly important to you. So you just want to check that before hitting submit. Um, make sure that you label your files um, correctly, as well as um, actually using the metadata to provide that information to the um, panel and not putting your name within um, that part of the application form. There will be a section on the form to put your name and artist name. Um, also recommending to take the time to um, review and edit your written statements. If you have a, a friend or a peer that might be able to read it for you just to see if there's anything that you might have missed. And it's always nice to have a second pair of eyes review that. I would recommend that as well. And please ensure that the contact details that you do put in your application form are correct since the, that will be the information that we will use to contact you if you are awarded as well as the contact information that we are going to use to reach out to you to let you know of your application status. So please make sure that um, those are correct. All right. And if anyone does have any questions, you're welcome to email us, but we do have a Q&A that we are going to do um, now and for the rest of the time, I, we want to make sure that this information it, um, does share, this information session does share the information that you need, but um, also allowing enough time for everyone to ask some questions. So I will actually take the time to look through the questions that we have right now and, and answer them. And um, I just want to reiterate again that this information session is being recorded and will be uploaded at a later time. So if anyone wants to review um, this information session at a later point, you'll be able to do so. All right. So looking into some of the questions that we have. First question I see, I'm wondering if collage arts Collage art counts for the craft category. Um, it can, and you can apply in um, craft sculpture with um, uh, collage art. I might suggest applying in um, printmaking, drawing, book arts, uh, as you might find that may be a stronger uh, fit for you in that category, uh, just because that category also accepts um, collage art, but you are, you are, you may apply in both if you feel that your work does, is applicable to both categories. Are illustrations done in pen and ink applicable as uh, drawing? Yes, it, it would be applicable as drawing. How much painting is allowed in the drawing? If a drawing has some painting, is it still eligible in this category? If, um, that is a good question. If you have, if your work involves using mixed media, in this case, it sounds like that is the type of work that you are doing, you can apply um, uh, under printmaking drawing book arts um, with that work. If your work is predominantly painting, um, it, a majority of your work is focused around painting, I would recommend that you uh, wait for the painting category to apply. All right. Um, is it better to send multiple, multiple photos of two or three projects or one photo of 10 projects? It's another interesting question. It, it does vary for different, um, uh, artists, depending on the type of work that you would like to show, you are welcome to share one um, series of work or one body of work within your 10 um, 
images, you can also share two to three projects if that's how you feel is the strongest way to reflect your work. I guess one thing I would just say to keep in mind is trying to have a consistent theme throughout your application form. So this includes not only the work samples that you were submitting, but your written statements. Um, if you find that it's stronger to talk about, if you have a similar singular theme that you want to focus around, that might be one way to represent your work. Um, it, and it might also, um, be be more helpful for you to um, center a theme around uh, your your written statements so that they can connect with each other. But you are welcome to submit um, multiple bodies of work or one singular um, project. Can we submit work made in 2019 and 2020? Is there any restriction on how old the work we submit can be, you can submit work that was made in 2019 or 2020. It doesn't have to be made in 2022. The example I showed had 2022 since that's the year that we're in, but you're not restricted to that year. We do um, recommend that artists submit work that has been created within the last five years. However, we do understand um, everyone's artistic practice is different. Everyone creates work at a different pace. So if you find that you have some work that has taken a little bit longer to complete, but is a current reflection of your artistic practice, you are welcome to submit that work. For my sculpture pieces, are, they are best portrayed in short video form. Does um, each short video count as a single image out of 10? Uh, well, first uh, I could say is we, Unfortunately, we don't accept uh, video in either the um, printmaking, drawing book arts or craft sculpture category. Both of these categories only accept um, images. So you will have to submit images in, the, in this category if that, in craft sculpture if that's um, the discipline that you plan to apply in. So, um, so instead of um, saying uh, the video count, if you have 10 images of your, your work or a series of work, um, this is um, how it will be represented on the application form. Uh, can 2021 City Artist Corps grantees apply for this fellowship? Yes, anyone who's listening today that um, that is a, uh, a City Artist Corps um, grantee, you are eligible to apply for the uh, NISCA NIFA Artist Fellowship, as well as the other grants that we currently offer at NIFA. All right, what is the excerpt um, explanation? The excerpt explanation is, um, it's an optional statement, but it is, it is a statement that gives you the opportunity to provide some extra context about your work. If, you've um, noticed that there is any work that you find, if there's anything about your work that you feel isn't apparent um, when um, reviewing them. For example, if, if your work is better reviewed, uh, better previewed in a certain setting, giving the panelists an idea of the ideal setting of how your work is typically um, experienced, as well if, if there's anything about, um, the creation of your work, if there's any background about the creation of your work that involves a larger um, project, you're welcome to provide that context. You're also welcome to itemize um, that information. So if you want to provide additional context about each image um, in list form, you're welcome to do that as well. What are jurors looking for in an application? Um, well, for our panel, we do have different panelists every year. So um, the different things that panelists do seek when reviewing the applications um, does depend on the panelist pool that we have. But I will say overall, um, we recommend that you submit work that clearly um, shows your artistic vision and voice. Um, if it has a consistent theme throughout the app application, so throughout your, your um, um, work samples and your written statements. 
and just being um, clear and succinct and share and uh, and sharing that information to the panel in a, considering the fact that they ha may have never experienced your work and making sure that you are um, providing that story to them. So um, there is no um, set uh, rubric other than following the application guidelines, uh, but I recommend keeping this in mind when working on your application form. Can artists apply to multiple categories? Yes, you are welcome to apply in a maximum of two categories this cycle. If you do plan to apply in two categories, you will have to submit two separate applications um, and make sure that when you are opening those applications, you are opening up the right application forms and submitting in the right category since um, they're all created independently and we won't be able to shift them over to a different category if you had applied in the wrong category. But the short answer is yes, you can apply in up to two categories. If we apply to more than one medium, do we submit two different applications with different images and statements or use the same one we sent twice? Um, if you are applying with more than one medium in the same discipline category, you cannot submit two applications. One thing I want to clarify is you can submit one application only for the discipline that you are applying in. If you have a second discipline that is not, if you have a different discipline that you plan to apply in with the same bodies of work, you are welcome to do that, but you can't apply in the same category twice. But you, if you plan to apply in two separate categories, you can use um, the same bodies of work or di different images if you feel they're better reflective of that discipline that you are applying for. And you, you're welcome to use the same statements, though I'd recommend tailoring it to match the, the discipline that you are applying for. If you apply in the sculpture category, but your sculptures contain drawings, can the same exact examples be used in the drawing category as well? Um, you, I, I may, you can consider applying in this category if you feel that drawing is a pretty strong element of that work. You might want to take the time to write in your written statements um, about, you might take the time to use your the technical statement to talk about that drawing technique and if it's really um, such an integral part of your work and, uh, just so that the panel has a better understanding. But another thing that I do want to um, let you know is that um, any final decisions will be made by the panel during the review process. Um, so they will be making the final decisions if you decide to um, submit your work in that category. But I definitely recommend taking advantage of that technical statement if drawing is also a big element of the work that you have. Uh, should the resume be specific to the application application uh, example should you only should only sculpture ex exhibitions and experiences be in the resume and not painting or performance if i am understanding this correctly and if not you're welcome to send in another question i i believe you're you're um asking how your resume should be and i want to say that you do not need a resume for this application, um, you're not expected to submit a, a resume or a CV. Um, so um, you do have an artist statement, which the artist statement is not a bio, but is, it is a chance to talk about the who, what, and why of your artistic practice. I'd also recommend if you are able to, to join us for our written statement information session, which will be on December 15th, but um, you don't ha have to submit a, a resume um, if that answers your question. I am a metalsmith that makes sculptural jewelry. Does this count as craft sculpture? Um, yes, as this in, involves um, craft making of some kind. So you are welcome to submit um, your work in that category. Can you submit comics, graphic novel pages for 
um, book arts or drawing, you can submit um, comics or graphic novel pages um, for the printmaking drawing book arts category. Just keep in mind that this is a visual category and not a literary category. So if the um, the story element, uh, the actual text that may be in your graphic novel is pretty integral to how um, your work is represented. Just know it will be reviewed in a visual lens. How many DPI per image? Should the DPI be consistent for all of the images? We don't have a set um, a DPI. Um, it could be up to 300 DPI. Usually 72 is probably the, the lowest some people do. So it's not fixed so long as your image is um, looks clear on the screen, it'll um, upload the same way on the application form. So there is no required minimum. The only thing that we um, did suggest is ensuring that your images don't get much larger than four megabytes, just to ensure that it's not um, too large and doesn't um, run into issues on the platform. For the craft sculpture category, is there some jury for craft and some jury for craft sculpture, or are they both jointly uh, evaluated? Um, the craft sculpture category is one category, so the panel will be um, evaluating works that apply to craft and sculpture. So it, it is one panel review, uh, that will be reviewing this category. Uh, do you try to allocate a distributed number of grants per New York state regions or is location completely disregarded? We do share the, um, the counties where everyone is applying to the panel. Um, the first one is, is anonymous, but we do share that information with the panel. Um, however, the um, review process is primarily determined by um, a scoring process and an elimination process. Um, so there isn't um, a, an exact um, aggregation for, for any particular counties. If collage art is primarily by hand with uh, digital in, um, intervention after creation, would that still be considered collage or digital arts? Um, it may be both. If you find um, if, if your work is primarily collage, then I would recommend applying in um, uh, the category that you, it, whether it's craft sculpture or printmaking drawing book arts, printmaking drawing book arts does accept um, collages. If your work is sculptural in some form, then I would recommend craft sculpture. Um, and if you find that your work primarily uses um, uh, computer, as um, one of the major mediums of that work, uh, then you can consider applying in digital electronic arts. We do have an information session coming up for uh, this discipline on December 1st. Uh, but if you have any further questions about the way your work is made, please email us. I am an illustrator and author, and I want to submit work that is currently being published, but not out till next year. What would be the best category to submit? My work is a mix of painting, drawing, and nonfiction writing. Is it, it, it is in a visual, it is in the format of visual essays in a book. Uh, well, you have a, a few options here. Um, since you are working um, with text, if you, if your text is, is one of the primary parts of your application, you might want to consider applying in the nonfiction category. However, just keep in mind for any images that you do submit, those will also count towards um, the 20 pages that are uh, required, um, that are the maximum number of 20, uh, uh, sorry, jumble of that. <laughs> you will just need to keep in mind that um, if you are submitting your 20 pages will be counted um, with the images that you also submit. So. That's one thing to keep in mind. If um, drawing is the primary focus of your work, you can consider applying in drawing, just keeping in mind that that is a visual category. So the primary 
focus of that category during the review process will be um, your drawings versus your text. Um, so you can apply to both categories if you do find that your work um, suits both categories. Um, and that way, I just re recommend tailoring your written statements to reflect those respective categories. And also keep in mind that um, printmaking, drawing, book arts accepts um, images and nonfiction literature accepts a PDF uh, manuscript. So it, the file format is something you have to keep in mind. Please explain the difference between the artist statement and the work statement. Sure, the artist statement, um, it's not necessarily a bio, but it is a way to briefly talk about the ideas and themes that you are addressing in your artistic practice. Um, and one thing you might want to do is capture the what, how, and why of your artistic practice. And it doesn't necessarily have, if you have a, you know, many artists are multidisciplinary and work in a lot of mediums, so you don't necessarily have to talk about um, the entire breadth of every um, uh, type of work that you do, uh, but maybe center it onto the, the type of work that you anticipate showing in your application form. And for the work statement, the work statement does tie into your artist statement in some way. Um, it is one way to directly reference how your work, how your, the ideas and themes that you did address in that artist statement and how that's represented in the work that you are submitting. So um, the work statement is primarily focused on just expanding on talking about um, your artistic practice in relation to the work that is um, being submitted in your application. And the artist statement is more of a general way to give the, the panel an idea of um, the who, what, and why of your artistic practice. So I hope that answers your question. And we do have an information session coming up for written statements on December 15th. Just want to confirm that, that art that is only drawing is acceptable. Um, for printmaking, drawing, book arts, this accept, accepts a variety of, of work. If you are anticipating applying with drawing, you can submit in that category. The only um, thing that we do mention is for any artist that involves that whose work only involves painting. Um, and this also includes water watercolorists to apply in the painting category, which will be available in a future cycle. Um, but if your work applies to printmaking, drawing, or book arts, you are welcome to apply in that category. And that is one category. Does textile work have to be sculptural or can it be 2D if they are handmade? It can be 2D. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be sculptural. I know um, craft sculpture, craft sculpture um, is one category, but if your work is, is not sculptural in um, or 3D, it, it doesn't have to be. Do you suggest submitting any detailed images um, you are welcome to submit detailed images. We do recommend it if you feel that you have a large body of work um, and you want to sh share a particular part of that work that is um, uh, uh, an important way of showing how your work is created and might not be as visible in that, um, that former image. So you are welcome to submit detailed images. Those will also count as part of your 10 images. But if you find that there is some part of your work that um, would be better represented if you share um, a detailed image, you can do that. And also, um, I would also recommend putting in parentheses detail in the title so that you could have a um, better idea of, so that the panel has a has a, an idea of um, that is a detailed image of whichever work that you already showed in its full scale. Is there one fellowship winner overall or one in each category? Um, there are many, there are um, several uh, fellows in every category. Uh, it, it, it varies every year, but I will say for 2022, we had um, 99 um, fellows across the five disciplines. Mm -hmm.
is work done with ink and brush considered um, drawing or painting? Uh, if you are using um, ink, ink uh, as the as your actual material, this for uh, this would this, oh you know what I recommend sending out some email so that we can look into that further. But I will say if ink is the primary material that you are using in your work, that's wouldn't be considered as paint. However, if you feel that your work is primarily painting, then I would recommend waiting for another category. But if you feel that your work is uh, mainly focused on the practice of drawing, you're welcome to submit that. And you also have a technical statement to talk about the process of your work even further so that the panel has a better, better understanding. Since I also want to say that um, any final decisions will be made by the panel. Um, so I'd recommend sharing that information with them. Should the artist statement be written in the third person? Uh, not necessarily. This is something that you can write in first person. Um, there is no um, singular way that you have to write your any of your written statements as well as your, your artist statement. Um, but I recommend just being um, clear um, and concise and uh, in, in talking about your artistic practice since it is 100 words, which um, for some 100 words is a lot. Uh, for others, this may um, be pretty pretty concise. So just um, keeping that in mind when um, writing that statement. But it it does, there's no requirement for it to be um, in third person um, or first person, but I recommend just, um, you might wanna do it in first person if that is clear, is that if that's easier for you, but you are also welcome to do it in third person if you um, feel that this is a better way of encapsulating your work, but I'd recommend just um, being concise. For craft sculpture, do the pieces have to be both craft sculpture or either or? It could be either or. This is one category, but um, the panelists that will be reviewing this work are panelists that work in craft or sculpture or a combination of the two. Please explain the three not required written um, statements on the application. Uh, sure, so I will um, just briefly go over the technical statement, expert explanation, and cultural statement, and we do have an information session that will be coming up on December 15th just to, to dive deeper into that, but your technical statement um, is a statement to just talk about the way that you make your work, um, if there's any techniques or equipment that you use in your work that you want the panel to be aware of, I recommend um, uh, sharing that with the, the panel. Um, in that statement. For your excerpt explanation, um, for the visual categories such as craft uh, sculpture or printmaking drawing book arts, this is an opportunity to um, uh, provide some context to the panel for anything that may not be apparent um, to them when uh, previewing your work. So um, for example, if there's an ideal setting in, in which the way your work is to be um, experienced, um, uh, or um, interacted with in some way, this is one um, place that you can provide that information. And you're also welcome to itemize that information if you feel that that context is specific to each image that you are referring to. And for the cultural statement, this is a statement that I recommend using if your work is, um, uh, is tied to a particular cultural or religious um, uh, community that, um, is connected to you and the, and the understanding of your art. So for example, if you are part of a, um, a, a community that uh, is connected to your work, this is when you would, a, a cultural or religious community that is connected to the work that you are doing, this is when you would do the cultural statement. All right, next question, can I include two views or angles of a single piece in one image slide, like a split screen, or does it have to be a single image? Your 10 images should be independent images. Um, in the guidelines, you may also note that we don't um, 
recommend you submit images that are, um, we recommend that you don't submit images that are, uh, that are put together into a grid. Uh, they should be uh, separate um, images uh, and they should not be put together into a grid. So I hope that answers your question. Would drawing step begin on paper uh, colored digitally and finalized on paper qualify as drawing even if the computer is integral in their creation? Um, I would recommend um, if you feel that your work does um, is a strong representation of this practice to apply and to take advantage of your technical statements and work statements to um, share this information with the panel. Uh, for situations like this, the panel will be making that final decision during the review process. Um, so if you feel that your work um, does fit in this category, you may consider it. But if the digital aspect is the primary focus of your work, um, you might want to look into um, digital electronic arts. But if it's a mix of the two, um, you may want to consider applying in both. Do we mention our name in the artist statement or should we identify ourselves not using our name? Um, for the written statements, we um, don't recommend that you include your name. There is a section on the application to include your name. Um, if you would like, um, uh, that information will be shared with the panel later in the review process. So um, you can just talk about yourself in first person and they will have um, the information related to your name later in the uh, panel review process. Is inkjet printing alone or in combination of another media considered printmaking? Um, it can be. So if that is a category that you're considering applying in, um, then I would um, consider applying in that category. Will the technical statement be reviewed until the second round? Yes, it will. All right, and just seeing if there are any final questions before we um, uh, we wrap up for today. We do have a few minutes left. Um, we do have some other questions coming in. Um, can I submit drawings that have nothing to do with printmaking or book arts? Yes, you can. Um, I just want to um, clarify again, printmaking, drawing, book arts, although it is one category, it is a category where we have panels that are um, actively working in each of these fields. So your work does not have to be a combination of those three types of work. It can be primarily printmaking, it can be only drawing or only book arts. When will registration for the written statement information session open? It will open about two weeks before the information session. And since that's on December 15th, it will open on December 1st. And you will know it opens when you see a register here sign next to um, the information session, but it, it will open for all of these the upcoming information sessions, just as a note for anyone who um, wants to um, register, they will open about two weeks before the information session happens and they will all be recorded and uploaded at a later date. Is there any downside to submitting in a category that is less suitable than another might be, but occurs during another cycle? It would be a different panel. Um, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a, a, a downside. However, if you don't feel that your work fits in, in a particular category, then you may not want to apply in that category. Um, but you, uh, there will be a different panel for every category and there will be another panel um, in the following year for the other categories. And just noting that we offer 15 different disciplines. So the categories that are gonna be offered next year will not be the same categories. So you'll, um, it will be a, a different panel um, each year. Um, someone who um, 
Oh, this is similar to a question that we answered. Um, I answered previously, and this will be the final question before we wrap up for today. Is there one fellowship winner overall or in, one in each category? There are several um, awardees in each discipline. Um, for 2022, we awarded um, 99 artists. Um, we do gen generally award over um, 80 artists each year. It does vary by year, so there isn't really a specific number um, that I can share, but I... Um, that is typically the range that uh, of fellows that we do have um, overall for the five disciplines that we offer for the year. And it is not specific to location. All of the reviews are uh, are done by um, uh, a scoring done, uh, within the panel process. All right, and I will wrap it up here. Thank you everyone who, um, uh, joined this information session, as well as dropping some questions in the Q&A. If anyone wants to look at this information session later, this will be uploaded later in the week and posted on the fellowships homepage, as well as NYPA's YouTube page. And if anyone would like to sign it, who's maybe interested in any of the literary categories coming up, the next information session for nonfiction literature and poetry will be on November um, 17th and registration has opened for that information session. So you're welcome to sign up um, now. And just thank you for taking the time to um, stick around and learn more about fellowships. And if anyone does have any questions, um, you are welcome to um, email us at fellowships at nyfa.org. Um, and just send, that, send those over to us. All right. So thank you and have a good afternoon and have a good weekend since we're getting pretty close to Friday. <laughs> thank you and bye.